Today, I'm happy to be here with Heather Tobin. She is one of the favorite people I've met <laughs> recently, and uh, I think you'll discover why. So uh, first, I want to say hi to you, Heather. Hi, Heather. Hello, to, George. How are you? Great, great to, to be have here. You here. Yeah, thank you so much. So I'm going to read your bio um, for everybody, and then we're going to get into this conversation. Uh, but Heather has been just a, just a, such a great um, participant in some of the courses I've taught. She is now in my Master Heart uh, business mentoring group. And she's really Im impressive because she replaced, she, she is, uh, you know, only a few years into her coaching and healing um, business. And she replaced her corporate income in a fairly short time. And so I think what she, I think she walks what she teaches. So anyway, let me, let me read your, your bio uh, for everyone, Heather, and then we'll get into the conversation. So Heather's motto is rock your mud. It is the basis of all her programs and her way of life. Her traditional schooling is in addiction treatment and counseling, and she's forever a student in the school of life. She shares the teachings of her own life lessons in a vulnerable, honest, and real deal kind of way. So she had a 20 year in, uh, in the corporate world, completely different industry, and now she's immersed herself full-time in the magical wonder of believing and trusting as a, as a solopreneur and as a coach and a healer. Um, Heather's a straight shooter. She shares what she needs, what needs to be shared and delivers it with love and humor. She's a master at illuminating BS stories that we create and as an authentic way of channeling information from a higher consciousness that reaches right to the core of the issue. She offers clarity, insight, and practical action steps for moving forward. And one of the cool things, um, Heather, you know, we were, she and I were talking earlier about her niche, so-called. <laughs> and the thing is, um, she has such a way with her clients and with people that people ask her for all kinds of things. And so really, Heather's niche is Heather Tobin. You know, that's her niche because she does different things. And you'll, you'll, you'll hear as we go into the conversation. Um, Heather, do you want to say anything about your background before we get going? Um, yeah, just uh, a little bit. I guess I, I like to pride myself on the fact that, quite humbly, um, that I didn't ever become a statistic. Um, you mm -hmm. know, when you grow up in a challenging environment uh, and you're conditioned a certain way, people have, I guess, certain expectations of how your life is going to play out. And I thankfully being me and deciding to get connected to who I really was eventually uh, a few decades in um, decided to just break the mold and not go down the path that many others um, had gone and so I kind of truly stepped into who I became and really am self-made I like to say that's so cool <laughs> um, give me just a second here all right. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, let's talk about let's talk about how you you've become self-made, and which is what so many of us entrepreneurs want to, because we've left behind the corporate job, or we were you know we were stay-at-home parents or whatever, and and now you know whether we're left the job or now that our our you know we our kids are older, some of some of us are, some <laughs> people are still with young kids, but how do we how do we do this and. Um, I think one of your one of your superpowers is really teaching people about how to reshape their mind because it really all starts with our mind and our emotions to be able to have a successful business, uh -huh. right? So, how 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 do we how do we shape our mind or reframe our thoughts? That kind of thing. Sure. Where I like to begin with people is to kind of take an inventory. I I, I suggest to them, you know, just pay attention to your thoughts over the course of a handful of days and, you know, keep a few notes. And this isn't about uh, shame or going into, you know, a pattern of guilt or looking at this list at the end of the week thinking, oh my goodness, I'm a mess. Like we're all a mess. It's fine. <laughs> um, but after doing which, that which inventory. Which is why you had, your club is called Rock Your Mud, yes. right? Yeah, 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 the mud club, right? Like, club, what, yes. what do you mean the mud club? Are we going out in our Jeeps? No, no. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's, it's the mud club because we all have mud. We all have mm. stuff stuck to us. And, you know, quite often it's, you know, society and upbringing and conditioning and that sort of thing. And so I really want people to first take a little bit of an inventory of what's going on, where their thoughts have been and their energy has been. And then we get back to basics. And by basics, I mean 
the moment your eyes open and your feet, before your feet hit the floor is, I am so grateful I get a gift of being alive today. I would love to poll the audience to say how many people actually do that. Um, and then just really saying, okay, so how do I shape my thoughts? Well, so we are so quick to get up, start our day and completely disregard anything and everything that we've looked at, touched, experienced. If you think about the amount of gratitude you can create in your life in the first 15 minutes of waking, depending on how your mornings start, you'd have a running list already. And so many people like to start with gratitude at, in the in the morning. They'll sit down and you know they'll they'll kind of do more of a reflection after they've got the kids off to school or you know hubby out the door or whatever the case may be. They've walked the dog, or at the end of the day it'll be an overall for the day. So what I like to tell people is, why don't you start doing gratitude on the go? So you've touched the tap that has now given you clean water. You've touched the hot water tap that's given you hot, clean water, right? You've used shampoo and soap that you've been able to afford and, and this sort of thing. So it's really about gratitude on the go in the moment. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah, because there's, and, and, and yes, the, the things that we do in our morning and just... Mm -hmm. The fact that sometimes I just give gratitude for remembering to give gratitude, like, yeah, like, right, like yeah. that itself is like a grace. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's so cool. And, um, so yeah, this is a powerful exercise. I, I really hope everybody mm -hmm. will, 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 will try this out. Um, you know, start your day with gratitude mm -hmm. on the go, yeah, you know, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, so how do you let's talk more about your your morning routine or what you recommend mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. how do we nourish ourselves uh, as, as the start of the day? Um, any, anything you would recommend to that? Yeah. The, the biggest thing I like to tell people is, you know, I think everybody's heard of the, the 5 a.m. club, right? Like everybody wants to be part of the 5 a.m. club and they think it's all the rage. Well, it's really not all the rage for a lot of people. It is for me because I'm an early bird. Um, so I'm, I'm one of that. I'm in that one of those people. But for the people that aren't, I always say to them, it's really not about the 5 a.m. club. It's about the me first club. And the me first simply means you are taking the time for you and you do what you need to do to take yourself to a place of wellness, of a place of balance, of a place of clarity, before you kind of just propel yourself into the day and start taking care of everybody else's needs. We, and I don't know if it's a generational thing, I don't know if it's a gender thing, I, I just, I, and I don't really want to go there with that because it's all people all over, I find. And what happens is, is we really are givers by nature. I think the majority of people love to give and over give. And so what happens is we forget that we need to give to ourselves first. And so by the end of the day, after everybody else has been taken care of and everything else has been taken care of, we end up with this paralysis of not knowing what to do for ourselves. And so I really like to try and uncondition people to that way of being and then relearn or remember how to take care of themselves first. And when I say remember, I tell them, think about when you were a baby. You cried when you needed something. You yelled when you needed something, you know, like it was either you needed to sleep, be fed, or be changed. So if you take yourself back to that first beginning moment of you being this beautiful little ball of light, where do you need to begin? What do you need to do? And so the very first thing is always you first, even if it's only the first 10 minutes of the day to do whatever it is that speaks to you as an individual. For some, it might be a yoga practice. For some, it could be meditation. For some, it could be journaling. But whatever it is, it just has to be for you first. Thank you. Yeah, that's really a great reminder. So one of the things that you know, you've been able to do, as I've mentioned before, is to be able to build a, um, a sustainable you know, business for yourself mm -hmm. in a relatively short time doing the thing you love to do. Yeah. 
uh, expressing your soul, expressing your gifts and, mm -hmm. and really helping other people. Mm -hmm. um, part of that journey, of course, is doing things that are outside one's comfort zone. Mm -hmm. All of us have to do that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we're not going to mm -hmm. have success because otherwise we would already have had it. We have to do yeah. things different <laughs> than what we've already been doing, yeah. stretching outside. So that is, um, obviously you've done that successfully and that's one of the things that you also coach and heal others into doing. Uh -huh. Any tips for us about being uncomfortable, <laughs> which is required, uh, like, you know, I, I, I say all the time in my videos, listen, I don't feel like doing this video right now, but I'm uh -huh. here, I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. It's true. Um, yeah. But once I'm in it, and it's like, ah, oh, it's not going to do it. But any, any advice and any encouragement in that regard? You know, I think, I think at the end of the day, we have to remember we're all human, <laughs> most of us anyway. <laughs> um, and we all bleed red. We are all one, right? So if we were to step outside of our comfort zone for whatever that looks like for people, if more of us did that, we would probably be a much healthier society, first of all. Um, but even on, on an inner circle level or a familial circle or you know, that immediate group we're around, the, the biggest tip I can offer is the only way to, for me to do this life is to just show up and be me. And for the people who love it, great. And for the people who don't, also great because we all have to really just be our true selves and show up as that is. I joke with people. I'm like, I'm absolutely insane, but I'm also one of the most balanced and, you know, easygoing people there is, but I also know how to like cut through my own crap and, and get to that place of realizing that everybody has their stuff, but we're so busy in this like egotistical society driven thing that we're trying to outdo situations or each other or whatever the case. It's like, yeah, that's not working for me. And so the, the, that's the comfort zone. The, that's the sheeple, right? Like that's, we're all just doing the thing that everybody else is doing. Um, the moment I stepped outside of that and the moment I, I walked into, I guess, my soul and took a look at what was going on in there, I realized that the discomfort was actually that over there that I was doing originally. This showing up as me right now in this moment, that's Heather. That's this moment. That's me. Yeah, that's beautiful. And as you do your work, as you build your business, there are times when you're doing activities that you are stretched in mm -hmm. um, creating content, showing up Absolutely. on video, um, you know, launching something you're not sure people will, uh -huh. will buy. Uh -huh. um, how do you deal with those uncomfortable feelings? <laughs> so I, when I first started out, Oh, good heavens. I was so afraid. <laughs> I thought, you know, I, I don't know how to show. I don't know. What if nobody signs up? Or what if only one person signs up? And I came to the realization that then that one person gets all of me in that moment. And so if I was running a live course or if I was running a group or whatever it might have been, if only one person was there, then they just got that much more of me. And that person needed that in that moment. And learning to be okay with that took a lot of battle because I thought, well, it's going to be a waste of my time if I only have one person or I won't be able to cover the costs of the venue, for example, these types of you know issues that come up for all of us, depending on what we're serving. And when I realized that that was really just kind of all the outside think um, and knowing that we all have to start somewhere, making a difference in the life of that one person could be the game changer three months later for anything and everything, for me, for them, for whoever it is and the ripple effect of that person's life or my life. And so I stopped judging what other people would consider a successful event versus a non-successful event and said, you know what? No, 
going to do it my way. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, that's okay too, because it's also still working even when I think it's not working. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great reminder. And what about um, our concern about what other people will say? I mean, especially <laughs> now that you've changed careers so much. Yeah. How have you, yeah. What, and and that, that leads us into this other conversation about kind of reframing our thoughts, what we say, um, yeah. you know, judgment and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, quite truthfully, I, I, so I have shared my life for a very long time uh, in writing. Uh, and I have probably, I want to say written honestly for about the last probably 10 years, but I cannot find all of my old material. Uh, but it has always been on Facebook or on a blog. And I didn't realize I was building an audience. I had no idea because I, at that point, was living two lives. I was living the life of the person with the, you know, the life coaching healing practice. And then I was living the life of corporate world, show up, do your office management job and then come home. And so neither knew that the other world was colliding. So I kept that two completely separate things. And there are still a lot of people who have no idea what Heather Wetton did after she retired from the corporate world. And there are a handful that know because I had a more intimate relationship with them, of course, with close friends and that I had worked with. And I really had to realize that if I started to think about, we'll say that the bigger names that are out there of, of business coaches or, you know, the, the non-guru gurus, because we know they don't really like to be called gurus, did they really stop and worry about how someone was going to think or react or respond when they were suddenly you know the life coach of the year or whatever title they have and I had to stop and really think about what thoughts I was carrying around it were they actually me legitimately thinking I wasn't good enough to do what I was doing or was it something that had been programmed into me because again of of conditioning and teachings and and whatnot. And when I realized that I could shape my day, my future, my everything through my mindset and choosing to show up with the right mindset every day, that that was going to be what made me or broke me. And there was no negotiating. And so my mindset work is my non-negotiable. My mindset work is more important to me than flossing. <laughs> and we all know how our dentists feel about us flossing every day, right? And so that, that is the piece for me. And if that's not there, I'm not here. Yeah, wow. Um, any tip about mindset shift? If someone were saying, yeah, I, uh -huh. I'm dealing with thoughts of my friends, family, colleagues yeah. judging me, um, yeah. you know, especially if I'm launching something that was different than uh -huh. what I launched last month. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm a flake. Am I a flake? And is this going to work? Are people going to laugh at me? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing I tell people when it comes to, you know, trying something new or launching something new or whatever is, first of all, if people are going to talk about you, and they will, let them. Because clearly they're not doing enough with their own life to be entertained enough to be ignoring what you're doing. That's, that's the first thing. The other thing I used to share to, with people a lot on that topic is, if they think you're so great to talk about, wonderful let them again because either way it's attention <laughs> either way it's 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 your energy in there in their sphere right the biggest tip i think for all of that is don't believe the stuff you tell yourself at 3 a.m because that's the stuff that will make you crazy when you are tired, when you are drained, when you've put all your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something and you're flat out done exhausted, leave it alone, ignore it for a couple of days, 
then come back and look at it and I guarantee you, you will see the mastery in it and you will see how magical it actually is versus what your 3 a.m. self will tell you. <laughs> That's great. That's a great, great reminder. Thank you. So I want to uh, encourage people to kind of look at your website, look at your Facebook. Uh -huh. um, I think you just offer so much uh, goodness there. And you have a couple of cool offerings I want to make sure people know about. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, as we said in the beginning, you <laughs> create different things because the people uh -huh. ask you for so many different yeah. types of things. Uh -huh. um, but uh, two things I want to mention your mud club, because we did already uh -huh. mention that. So I want to talk yeah. about that. And then also upcoming decluttering for the soul mm -hmm. um, program. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So mud club, let's start with that. Tell us what that is and how people get involved. And So the mud club is my absolute most favorite thing in the world. It is a monthly group. So what happens is at the beginning of the month, a new group of people sign up and start and they stay for the month. There's no pressure to stay for anything longer than a month. It's a month to month sign up. The idea is that it is a space for people who are either just getting their feet wet or people who are looking to continue their practice, even looking for more accountability to get your mind mud straight. So we were talking earlier about how to start the day and how to be in that me first mindset. That's the idea with this. And so what I do with that group specifically is there are days where there are content. So there could be a day with a forgiveness exercise, or there could be a day where we're celebrating the wins of other people, or we're focused on the lessons learned that week. There's also days in there where I encourage people to plan uh, what things they want to take care of next week. There is a, right now, a 10 minute challenge this week that everybody just takes 10 minutes to organize their area where they're doing their mind mud work because people are very often overwhelmed because of the environment that they're in. And I'm like, no, no, you have to 10 minutes and that's it. Don't do 20, don't do 12. 10 minutes, take care of it and move on to the next thing. And so it's a, the energy in there is just so wonderful. It actually, like there are days that I cry. It is so amazing. Yeah. How and it's a Facebook group, is. right? There's it a Facebook is. Group. Yes. Okay. Sorry, and I'll just I say, you know, having, <laughs> having been in a Facebook group with you, Heather, I think uh, you, you just bring amazing energy and, <laughs> Thank and you. Kind, of, kind of container. So folks, if yeah. you're interested definitely check it out. I think uh -huh. this would be one of the best Facebook groups you join. Um, yeah. And then your Decluttering for the Soul. Tell us about that. Uh -huh. So the Decluttering for the Soul is actually starting on Monday. It's starting on the 20th and it's seven w days. Will you be doing it again in the future? Perhaps? I am in, in, in yeah, case people I watch am. this and... Yes. So I'll be running it again and there will be a wait list sign up on yeah. my oh, website. Good. Okay. So basically just go to the link that we're going to give you and then... People can yeah. join whenever's coming up. Exactly, exactly. But yes, it is starting on Monday. Um, and the idea is that it's not just about, you know, taking care of making sure that your area is neat and tidy, but it's also about taking care of making space in all areas of your life when it comes to people, places, and things. Cool, very good. So we'll have links in the notes of the video for these different things. Um, but just, I want to be sure to at least uh, name your website. So the website is heathertobin.ca, which is Heather, H-E-A-T-H-E-R, Tobin is T-O-B-I-N, heathertobin.ca, okay, .ca, not .com. <laughs> Heather, you're in Canada. What part of Canada are you in? I am really close to Toronto, Ontario. Cool, cool. So heathertobin.ca, go check it out. Um, of course, she's active on Facebook, on the business page and her profile, you know, check out either one or both. Heather, thank you so much for the work that you do and for showing up uh, for us today. Thank you very much, George.